Hi, I want to put a challenge out to you to uh, take a walk and go look for some really bizarre shadow shapes. The one that I've got here is an amazing casting of a tree. There is colour to it. Take your camera and go and look. Take these photographs. See what the shadow shapes do. Bizarre things like wrapping themselves up and around the edges of a building. Sometimes it's the tree that's cast behind you, but it changes a scene so radically. Instead of just drawing a pathway or painting a pathway, I'm painting a pathway that's got the reflections of a yucca tree. So it's like explosions, like uh, fireworks. You can easily see the blue reflected in there too. When you take your morning walk, take your camera with you. The early morning sunlight is low in the sky and the shadows are long, particularly in the winter time. The shadows can often describe the form of uh, something, as in the case of this picture, where the shadow comes across and goes up over the curb and without having to show the curb itself, I can see that it has volume to it, it has form. Look at the next time when you're out the tree trunk of a tree and look at the shadows on it and think of how you might paint that. There's obviously a shadow where the light isn't on the tree and then in and out of all the bark, there's some very fascinating shapes waiting for an aeroplane. I looked down in the early morning sun and I thought, wow, those are some dynamic, bizarre shadow shapes that are cast. That'd make a very interesting painting. Also because you've got shadows within the actual luggage carts, so, uh, and then around the figures. I love this one because it's just a chain on the ground that I saw, but the shadow shapes cast have color within them. There's a lighter shadow on the edge and then the blue closer to the links of the chain. And then this rather large loop. But that's to me is a very exciting subject because of the bizarre shadow shape. Out the window of an aeroplane, the clouds themselves have shadows, but on the land the shadows also create an amazing pattern. Trees, leaves on tree trunks. If you paint the tree trunks blue and then you've got all the greens and then the darks and the shadow areas in the trees, you can see amazing new shapes and exciting patterns that if you just painted the tree alone and the tree trunks, they wouldn't be there. Next time you look at a flower, try to find the shadow shapes within the flower. Think about the colours that might be in those shadow shapes, the pinks in the shadows, and paint the painting based on the shadow shapes. Try it in blue, see what it's like. Taking a walk through a forest of trees, you can look at this and think to yourself, well, it doesn't have a clear directional light, but there are a lot of shadow shapes, and if you painted those in first, then you could just run a wash over where the tree trunks are and the shadow shapes aren't. I love this one. This was a, a winter's day on a farm and the shadows that were cast on the elevation of the building gave the whole of the scene a great excitement and, and life to the picture. There's also a very sharp shadow that's cast from the roof line and that gave an architectural shape to it. And then out in an Australian scene, we have the rolled bales of hay. And the shadow shape is very, very unusual. But if you repeat it, it gives stability and form to the bales of hay. It gives dimension and perspective to the scene as well. And then you can have the shadow shape of the tree and then you can have the actual shadow shapes cast onto the building's facade. And that in itself livens up this picture of a um, house that you might draw. So I encourage you, when you go out for a walk, wherever you are, 
think to yourself in your sketchbook, you can draw up some shadow shapes and enjoy yourself in this adventure, see what you can find.